Hello everyone, how are you? Hope you're all doing well. I don't have anything on my eyes and I've got a red lip. It's a questionable life choice one which I'm running with. Okay, so the reason that I'm not all like set up and I'm holding you in my hand is because today I'm going to be doing a makeup kit kind of storage and collection video. So I'm going to go through everything that I've got in my makeup kit, how I organise it, what I use to organise it, how I kind of separate everything so it'll be handy for makeup artists. Let me just tell you before I um, jump in that the case that I've had, I haven't had it for too long so I haven't um, well, I've had it during lockdown only, so I haven't been able to go out and sort of like use it and I haven't been bumping it up and down the stairs like I always do when I am being a makeup artist. I know from other people's reviews that the Zucker cases, which is what I use, are really, really strong and durable um, and they do have a lifetime warranty, at least from when I got them from. But yeah, I can't give you a proper in-depth review on the Zucker case just yet because I haven't really got to use it as a makeup artist, much less than what I have just used it sitting in my bedroom. But yeah, let's just get into it. You nosy parkers, I know you all wanna know. Right, okay, this is my Zucker case. It's a really, really strong makeup sort of travel case. Um, really, really durable wheels, again, from what I've seen and what the company is known for. It has so many different compartments. It's got one here, and then it's got another one behind. It's got a little one for business cards. Some more around this side, again, little double pockets, um, and then another small one around here. Another great thing for makeup artists, if you travel, you know, you go on the train a lot, Zucker cases are formulated as well to be a stool. So you can sit on these when you're on the train, or when you're in a really, really limited space, like a lot of us makeup artists are, you can get other people to sit on them. So this little flappy part has a magnet in it, so that magnetises straight to the top. And then when I open up this zip, we're straight into the makeup -y bits. So over here is sort of like my little tool space. So I've got my setting spray, I've got a little Sharpie pen, um, my steel palette that I put sort of my foundations and concealers on. And then behind here, I've got some beauty blenders and then a little hair grip as well in case someone's hair's all in their face. So in the Zucker case that I bought, it comes with five different bags um, and then little name tags like you can see for each thing. Um, there's one small one in there that doesn't have a name tag. That's this one up here. Um, and then the other the four do so let's just get into what's in them and what you can kind of fit in the case okay so right at the top of my zucker case i keep my james charles x morphe um little brush holder yeah, it just literally is a little oval and it keeps all of my brushes in there it keeps them nice and neat and it stops the brushes getting everything dirty the zucker case does have a little bit of a shelf up the top here if you are a hairdresser or if you take your ring light with you it's absolutely perfect for wires or hair straighteners things like that okay so the first little bag is the smallest bag and this is the skincare one so in here to be honest i keep a variety of different things usually this is handiest for makeup wipes but my boyfriend is currently at the shop buying me more makeup wipes because i've run out so yeah i keep tons of makeup wipes lots of different moisturizers anything from simple i've got a clinique moisturizer in here got a lot of different face oils so i've got the clinique turnaround revitalizing oil i've got the rose hip seed oil from the ordinary and then some little dermalogica bits like the water gel which i love and then we've got some redness relief essence as well if i've got a client with particularly red skin okay, that's the smallest bag of the three and that one doesn't have a little name tag on it if i compare that to the size of the other ones you can see it's quite significantly smaller um, so you can fit a hell of a lot more in these ones. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty, so into the actual makeup products. I do just want to say that for my kit in particular, it may be different for a different makeup artists, I'm very much of the opinion that if I can get my kit down the smallest I possibly can, then that's for the best because I don't want to carry a ridiculously heavy makeup bag full of products that I don't like or use around with me. So I try and minimise as much as I've physically can and I only bring products I know 100% are going to work. So up on the top is my eye bag. I keep this at the top because pretty much everyone knows by now I do eyes first. So let's get up a close and personal shall we? Okay so this is the eye bag all open. At the top I've got tons of Soul Sister Cosmetics lashes. They're the foam ink lashes that I'm really into at the moment. They're really really cheap, affordable and lovely. And then into this bag we literally just have a mess of eye products. So these are all my loose eye products. A glue stick as well when I'm doing crazy eyeshadow looks. The majority of my pigments are MAC ones. 
So these little MAC pigments here, um, they come in Christmas sets usually every year, so they're slightly smaller than the usual size, but they are brilliant. I use them on so many of my clients. I've got some Kiko glitters in here as well. These are gorgeous, they're really nice glitters. They come in tons of different pretty shades. Back on Soul Sister, they have absolutely unreal pigments. This is Sugar Baby pigment. It's absolutely gorgeous. I am obsessed. Little glues round here. I've got my Pears soap for when I glue down my brows. And then obviously mascaras, little pencils. We've got some brow products. These are some of my favourite cheapy brow pencils as well. The Brow This Way Fibre Pencil from Rimmel is really, really nice. This Brow Satin from Maybelline. It's not my favourite. In fact, I prefer the Rimmel one, but it does work really nice. Also, I just want to highlight this Tinted Brow Mascara. It's from Collection. Um, this is just in a sort of ash blonde kind of colour. Um, it's bloody fantastic. It's really, really good. I can't remember how much it was, but it's definitely cheap. So good for the money and ridiculously well glues your brow hairs down and gives them a little tint as well. Everyone knows these are my favourite liners. I also absolutely adore the Rimmel Glam Eyes liners here. These are stunning as well. Really, really nice. Dry down matte. Don't transfer ever. Also back on pigments, these Cryolon pigments, which I actually got mine in London, but I'm sure you could probably get them online. These are so stunning, so, so pretty. This one is one of my favourites, but it just says SP428. Really, really nice. I love them. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, it is a little bit of a mess because that's just... When they're in bags, there's no real way to organise them. They're always going to end up like this. But yeah, I love them bags because you can see exactly what you're looking at. You can throw everything back in and it goes straight in without a problem. And then just to keep it looking a little bit nicer, I always put the lashes on top because it kind of covers up all my messes. Thank you. Okay, next we have the face bag. So I've obviously got my Bobbi Brown contour <laughs> mess that this is. It's brilliant. If you're a makeup artist, I do feel like you need something like this. It's got a wide range of shades. Obviously, they're not every shade, but they do do a wide variety. And then into all of my foundation-y stuff. So obviously, I've got my Aloe Waters from L'Oreal. They are my most favourite skincare product I've found in a long time, and they feel amazing on the skin. I've talked about these in a video before, I think, the MUA Pro Bases. I'm not going to lie, they're not my favourite foundations as uh, a foundation but they are really really cheap and they're quite full coverage so I really like to use these as mixers so you can see I've got a white and then a really tan shade so they're really good to mix together really handy and really cheap I also love these ordinary foundations they're really really nice relatively affordable alternatives for foundations they come in a beautiful shade of colors um, and they really focus on the undertone so this one's 1.2 yellow and um, so it's got a yellow undertone and things like that so if you aren't too sure on undertones, I have done a video on it, which is on my uh, All About series, which you can go and check out, and it tells you all about colour theory and the colour wheel and finding the right foundations. But yeah, these really focus on undertones, which is why I love them. I've just actually bought some Model Zone foundations. I don't know why. I went shopping, and it was a stand that I've literally got no Model Zone makeup. I haven't tried these yet at all, so I've just chucked them in there, and I'm going to try them over the next couple of days and see how they work. Hi there, it's Editing Emily. Just a quick one. I tried, I haven't tried the squeezy one yet, but I tried the square one. Not very good. Save your coin. Don't buy that one. I will update on the squeezy one in good time. This is a foundation that probably, you know, now's not the time to do a review, but I love this foundation for the coverage, but I don't know if anyone else has this problem. It's so dry that sometimes when I pump it out of here, it actually gets stuck in the tube and I can't use the pump anymore because it gets clogged up because of how dry, how much it dries down. So I don't know if it's just like maybe I've got a bad batch because people use this all the time and no one talks about that, but it is a really lovely foundation for coverage, but it's just damn matte. I've spoke about these a lot as well, these Cover FX Custom Cover Drops. They're absolutely brilliant. They feel like water, so they're perfect mixes for foundation. I think this one's in P30, but they come in a huge range. I just add in a couple of drops to a foundation that I feel needs slightly more coverage. 
for a makeup artist things like this are perfect just little one trick mixers that will fix any foundation that isn't working any shade that isn't quite right stuff like this is what you need so i mean yeah there's a couple of other bits obviously some studio fixes i've got one double wear because i'm actually not the hugest fan of double wear anymore some revolution this one's one from Stila, which i really like this is as well something i've had in my kit for ages and i've not actually tried it's a studio fix stick from mac never actually tried it i love the packaging i think the packaging is so nice but i've never actually tried it then i've got some of my fave concealers in here in all honesty these concealers are like the only ones i tend to go for it's either the fit me from maybelline i want one that's just i know is brilliant the lasting perfection if i want something full coverage and mattifying or again the barium's kind of similar really full coverage and really matte as well so these are the most perfect super drug concealers that you can get i don't think they get better than this so yeah foundation I've got a wide range I go from you know higher end foundations to really loving the ordinary um, I've got Maybelline one there I've got Revolution one there although these Revolution ones they're really not my favorite I'm not gonna lie the concealing defines but yeah that is my little face bag so let's put all that away Lily, I can't get it open okay next we have powders so this is like everything cheek and face product basically and um, so it's anywhere from like just face powders like the translucent powder from laura mercier to little highlighting palettes i've got this violet voss highlighting palette is stunning really really pretty uh, i've got the hyper reel from mac in here as well really nice similar kind of concept to the violet voss one fenty beauty highlighter in there i've got a loose highlighter from juvia's place which is gorge that one's the Nubian in Nefertiti. It's so nice as eyeshadow, but also on deeper skin tones as a highlight. Sis, delish. I've got an Inglot loose powder as well. And then like a really nice cheapy highlighter. This is just from MUA. I bought it quite a while ago now. It's just a shimmer highlighting powder in golden scintillation. Nice. I've got some MAC powders in there. My favorite NYX blush in the world that I use on everyone. This is the Cinnamon Blush. Another nice little high-end highlighter is this one from Estee. I've used this so much so it looks like this, but the, the, I remember the packaging when I first got it was delish. Little, this reminds me of working at MAC. I bought this because I was just like, what does the hell does this do? And I had to buy it because I have, like, when people come in and ask about it, you, I kind of felt like I had to know about it. It's not that great, not going to lie, but I keep it for the nostalgia. Broken MAC highlighter. This is Double Gleam, which when I was on counter... Like, I felt like no one wanted this. They always wanted, uh, oh, what's that one called? In editing, I'm going to write the name here. Everyone wanted that. And then once, Nikki Tutorial mentioned how good Double Gleam was in a video. And we sold out a Double Gleam. And I've been spending ages trying to get people to buy this. Got a little Too Faced powder foundation there. A little MAC concealer palette, which I don't know why this is in here. It should be in the eye portion, but anyway. A shade and light palette. Um, again, I don't really use this at all because I'm not a big fan of the shade range. But every now and again, um, I do find that these bronzers come in handy. And this is actually a really lovely palette. Again, I don't know if Revolution still sell this, but this is their collab with, the, with Imagination. This limited edition shade. I swear that's like one of the only reasons I've kept it so long. It's like pure white shimmer it's perfect i love it and you can't it's really hard to find like a white shimmer that's really nice and that one's amazing so that's why i've kept that so long and it's a big mirror hello so yeah that's the powders done and last but not least we have lips and i've got everything in here from <coughs> fake blood to like really expensive louboutin lipsticks so this is probably my most used little thing again it's my bobby brown lip palette again i've said it before i'll say it again as a makeup artist you need customizable things you need things that you can manipulate things that you can you know mix your own so this is why it's so perfect because people come in wanting colors that i swear don't ever and have never existed but you can make your own with these they're perfect but yeah i've got everything in here i've got some liquid lipsticks these ones from bourgeois are really nice maybe a little bit drying on the lips but still really nice they smell like chocolate this uh la Roque alter ego lip gloss which is beautiful this uh lip boss lip gloss from barry m is really nice but it's kind of a little bit oily so sometimes it manipulates the lipstick underneath but it is quite nice this was like this is like unicorn skin to me beautiful then of course my little mac lipsticks which i have loads of because you just can never ever get enough mac lipstick and for anyone who doesn't know shrimpton from mac is 
has and always will be my favourite nude lipstick. I love peach stock. I love like most MAC nudes, but Shrimpton takes the cake. It's the best. Go and buy it now. Why? <laughs> yeah, pretty much MAC lipsticks have always and will always be the best. I love MAC. You love MAC. <laughs> But these, oh these Topshop lipsticks, I think I've said in a video before, they're absolutely unreal. They're actually quite similar in formula to the MAC lipsticks and they are, I mean they're not ridiculously cheap but they're slightly cheaper than the MAC lipsticks as well so they are really really nice. This Violet Voss Gloss, look at that, oh my god. And then my favourite nude lip liner ever, which people always ask me, is this Barry M Toast Lip Liner. It's actually unreal. It's only a couple of quid. So nice. And with my Shrimpston lipstick, oh my gosh, so nice. Also, for anyone who doesn't really like the feeling of lip gloss and they like, like, they prefer like a lip balmy texture, Burt's Bees do these like high shine lip balms and they are really, really nice. They smell unreal as well. If you're a matte lip kind of girl, these NYX soft matte lip creams are unreal. They stay on for absolutely absolutely ages but they do not dry your lips out but yeah there's tons of things in there in all honesty if it's not a matte lipstick and it's not from my bobby brown palette i don't really use it but lipstick's one of those things i find really easy to hoard because i think oh anyone could ask at any given time but i still try and keep it to a minimum i've definitely chucked a hell of a lot of lipstick away when i was organizing my makeup kit when i first got this bag i threw tons away and gave tons away to other people and my friends and stuff so this is like the the massively reduced version of this so yeah that is literally everything for the actual makeup bag and then in my bedroom i do have this little drawer now trust me when i say i downsized so much of this and got rid of so much that I don't use so this is like my newly organized makeup station so these are just for palettes literally these naked palettes I'm not gonna lie I don't really use them but naked palettes hold some some a lot of nostalgia for me that I can't get rid of them because they were my first palettes small little hooder ones here this is one of my newer ones I've got the Jeffree Star Morphe palette which is really pretty now this is one of the tools that i used to downsize uh i think i got like six palettes out of this um was the z palettes so i literally i've got a nudes one and a colorful one and i just I, yeah i think as i say i think i got rid of six palettes just in those these ones by juvia's place everything by juvia's place is gorgeous the packaging is unreal and they execute everything amazing I've talked about this and used this in a video as well, this Patricia Bright eyeshadow palette with Revolution. One of the best palettes I have ever bought from Superdrug ever. It was £20, so versatile, and these eyeshadows I will always pick over loads of my high-end eyeshadows, so that is amazing. There's a beauty one here, which is quite nice, but I don't use all the time and I can't open. <laughs> It is really nice, but I, meh, it's just a bit meh, but I do like it. I'm a huge Revolution fan, so I've got a couple of Revolution palettes here that I've spoke about before. Another little, um, this is a big The Magic palette by Juvia's Place. This is my first Juvia's Place that I'm obsessed with. And then also my Carnival XL palette from Be Perfect with Stacey Marie. Really, really gorgeous, perfect for makeup artists, just amazing. So yeah, like I said, that is my massively downsized, newly organized makeup stash. Any kind of tips for makeup artists is any kind of palette versions of things that you can get with a combination of tons of colors where the product is sound, you need to get them so like those Bobbi Brown palettes, unbelievable. An investment, 100%, but imagine the amount that you're gonna be able to progress your business if you're able to accommodate so many different skin tones and you're gonna give people exactly what they want. Those customers are gonna keep coming back and keep coming back because you can always give them what they want. Makeup is such a person to person, individual kind of thing. And so you need a broad spectrum. In today's day and age, there is no excuse for not having someone's foundation shade. No excuse. Whether you're a makeup artist that has just started, you need to have a white and you need to have a deep, 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 deep skin tone of a good quality foundation so that anyone in between those two colours you can try your best to accommodate for. No one's expecting you to have every shade ever made, but you need to be able to accommodate for a really wide variety of skin colours 
even if they're not your everyday clientele. You need to have them, it progresses your business and it's 2020, god damn it, and we need to accommodate for everybody. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. That is my makeup stash. I hope you liked it. Like I say, my makeup stash changes all the time because I spend a lot of money on getting new makeup every few months. I kind of try and revamp everything. Um, but because that's my newly organized set, I wanted to show you all now. I've got new foundations, new eyeshadow palettes on the way as well. So I'm gonna have to reorganize everything once they come. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please subscribe and give it a like. It would really help me out. And also, if you would like a dedicated video on makeup artist tips, I'm more than happy to do that. But thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.